Hi, Daniel. Hi, Stefan. Thank you for your time and your passion of music. Um, my first question is, why did you choose State Cause as name for your band? Do you remember, Stefan? Do you remember this one? <laughs> OK, I'll take that one. Uh, think, I think it's our most. Uh, it's a, our most frequently asked question probably. Uh -huh. because the, the name uh, we I think we what we did was we uh, we took the word West Coast and we just mixed the letters up a little bit, we jumbled them and we put them together again into two new words and that became steakhouse. So that's the only that's the only thing really that happened. There's no profound reason for the name. And um, when people have been asking about this, especially in Sweden, I get getting set questions about the name. So, um, some have, some think the name is state, uh, state chaos. Chaos in in Swedish means chaos. Okay. Uh, chaos and and so they, they thought it was like state chaos. Are you some kind of uh, you know uh, anarchists band or something like that? But, um, you know, that was nothing like that. It's a mix uh, yeah. uh, between uh, Swedish and, uh, and America? No, no, no. It's no? completely, yeah, completely <laughs> American. Just state cows. <laughs> yeah, we, no. we, just, it. we just mixed the letters up and uh, made, made a play with words. Okay. It. <laughs> then it became state cows. Okay. And uh, I really love your, your music and um, the sound of Chili Dam. Uh, but can you explain for those who don't know him and his career, what do you love this artist so much? Well, I can start. Uh, Steely Dan is a, is a two-man band, really, with Donald Fagan and Walter Becker. Uh, started in New York, I think, in, in, in USA. And they mixed mixed jazz harmonies with pop harmonies and uh, they are uh, and the mixture with with those kinds of genres and styles and made their the the music unique and with some uh, and added to that that the, the lyrics that are very special for Steely Dan that sarcastic lyrics that really grabs you uh -huh. so that that makes it great and of course they always had superb players they had the ace, the best players available. They always yeah. used used them on the recordings. The, the best featuring. Makes, yeah, this yeah. makes it even more interesting. Uh -huh. yeah. And you and yeah. Daniel uh, met together in a school of music in Sweden. I guess that you had already a pure passion for the West Coast sound at the beginning. Uh, yeah, we did. But uh, I grew up listening to a lot of different kind of music. Uh, when I was when I was little, my father always played the Beatles records and uh, the '60s pop records, and even singer songwriters like Cat Stevens and uh, some Swedish prog records and so on. And and then he started to buy like uh, when it was in the 80s when the Total Records came out, the Chicago Records. He started to to listening to that kind of music, and that's that's when I was growing up. So he played a lot of those records uh, when I was growing up. So that really hit my attention, and and I started to to dig that kind of music. Uh -huh. And can you tell us more about the time uh, you were in Los Angeles and? The chances you had to meet all these stars as Bill Champlin, David Foster, Jay Graydon. Uh, it's a long list with Michael Londo. Uh, yeah. Big moments. Yeah. The reason why we got to meet all these people is because we get up. Uh, my mother's doing the website for Jay Graydon. She's been doing that from. Uh, from the early 90s mm -hmm. and then, then Jay Graydon came to visit Umeå I think in 90, 1994, 93 maybe and, um, and played a concert so um, 
they uh, they made a connection, and from from then on, uh, he has been uh, a friend to the family. So uh, when we went over to LA, we had um, we had a, this connection with Jay already before. Yeah. So he he uh, um, he was um, in, instrumental in helping us to meet all these people. Also, another guy was very important. That's Ian Eels. Yeah, who was sound engineer for, on, on some of the records that Jay did, and he's also married to the sister of David Foster. Yeah. So we had many many of these uh, other connections, like with Jay Gruska. We went uh, with him to see Jay Gruska and uh, some other people. Oh, big chances. And how did you learn to record, to produce an album, and, and to have this so perfect sound? What are the bases? Thank you. <laughs> um, the, what you just listen to what other people do, and you try to do what they do. If, they, if you have someone who does something good, like, say, Steely Dan, or you have the record, recordings with David Foster and Jay Gray, you listen to them and you try to figure out what they're doing and and then you try to do something like that um i don't think there's any other secret to it really uh -huh. and where do you find inspiration of your songs that you then yeah <laughs> Every, everywhere if i if i read it if i read something interesting or if i see a tv show or in the news, if I, uh, yeah. Yeah. listen to some interesting record or or just anything. I I have a like a little black book where I write down some uh, lyrics, lines, uh, or something that I find an idea or something that I find interesting. I write it down in this book, so I keep it so I, and I, that, that I don't forget it. And then I can go back, maybe pick it up or uh, develop it into a song. So you, you always start with the lyrics? No, it's not, uh, not, the, not the, the, it doesn't have to be the lyrics, but it can be an idea or something cool that I see. Uh, some words, yeah. Some words or, or like a scene from a movie or a theme or uh, anything really. I just okay. write down the idea and then I go back and I pick it up and try to make it something something from it. Mm -hmm. So I have to tell you that uh, I'm from a city of uh, the east of France, a name Nancy. I don't know if you know Nancy in the east of France between Strasbourg and Paris. And uh, my city uh, with no sunshine, no heat, and California soon really saved my life, I can tell you. Uh, is it the same for you both? Mm. Maybe in a way, you know, there's kind of an uh, this escapism of that kind of music. It's very it's interesting that you say that because it's the uh, there's a lot of people listening to West Coast uh, and and Jock Truck albums in in Sweden, where we're from, mm -hmm. and it's always been you know it, it has this kind of you know California sound to it. Mm. So maybe there's a maybe there's something like an escapism about it, you know, getting away from the snowy winters and dark, uh, you know, darkness and all that. Never really thought about it, but you might be right. I think I think there's some truth to that uh, because, uh, for me anyway, uh, from from where we come from in Umeå up way up north in Sweden, it's dark and it's almost dark all the time, not much sunshine, only in, only in, in the summer. It's, it's very, it's, it can be light, but it's cold anyway. Uh -huh. So, uh, and the bands in this town, they played a lot of pop, deep pop, and like gloomy, not so interesting. And, and uh, I, I, I've, I've, I've we kind of wanted to re revolt to that and make some positive songs, write positive music about sunshine, about feeling good, really. Mm -hmm. And do you like uh, uh, singers like uh, Christopher Cross, Michael McDonald? 
Yeah, of course. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the voice of uh, Michael McDonald. And um, and about the the your early years, Daniel, the IP of 2002 name uh, DP Strange Ways is a very po powerful one, very positive, only good wise, as usual. We can find a, a total touch, if I'm right. Yeah, okay. that, that was the first uh, project I was involved in, really, and my first songwriting uh, project. So uh, I wanted to, to, to try to keep that positive sunshine vibe in that project. And it was with my uh, a friend I met in high school, Peter Starfeld, who played the bass and I played guitar. And we used to sit in our uh, sit in our rooms and jam together, just making, uh, he played the bass and I played guitar and I sang. And we tried to come up with, with stuff. Uh -huh. And eventually we, we started to, to form some songs and, and, and for, for this project. And we wrote some, some lyrics to it, recorded it on my little Porta studio, like an eight track device. And then, then we got, we had, we had five, six songs that uh, we had, uh, that sounded really good. Then we decided to record it and release it as a project. Uh -huh. And Stefan, about the story of a woman, your album from 2003 is a kind of uh, the styles you love, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Great ballads, piano, maybe a, a touch of John Lennon, Paul McCartney as a solo career, the Beatles, and maybe a touch of Alan Parson. Uh, yeah. and, Pretty good. <laughs> I think so. It's, it's um... I guess more progressive than than uh, you know the and the, than the West Coast stuff that we did. Which it's more a mixture of different things. It's just it's songs that I've been collecting for, from over the years um, mm -hmm. before that. So it just came together and uh, we recorded them on a CD. Uh, but there's an overlap with the, the personnel playing on DP and, and you know playing on the on the same album. Uh, playing on my album as well um but you know it's just, just i was just doing anything that i i had to do it's just um you know just a mixture of styles and things i liked so mm -hmm. no no really clear thought about it it's just a, like a medley of different styles and tunes i like to do <laughs> and concerning the the title the wolf was it an experience <laughs> um, i think it was more the sound of the intro of that tune, because it has a certain, it has a, some kind of synth sound going on in the beginning that sounds a bit like a wharf. That's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, where the, the water is, is crushing on the side of the wharf, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of, I think that, that was the only reason why we named it that. That was made with the drummer of the DP project. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Peter Tissell. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did that as a duo, duet, duo project, project together, that one. Mm -hmm. And Daniel, with uh, Days in LA from 2013, we are back on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I'm right? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Days in LA came, we, we went to Los Angeles and started there. Uh, I, we, I wrote the songs together with Stefan and Peter, who was involved in the DP project. Uh, we wrote the songs about my experience in, in LA and, um, and that made, made it sound more West Coasty. And he want, I wanted it to sound that way too. Um, and it's also the same people, same musicians involved from, from, from the DP project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the the Dynamo Bliss albums, uh, the Twenty One Century Junk, and popular music. Um, for me, um, there is a, a, a touch of seventeen uh, eighties starting in uh, these albums. You no, know, very cool, smooth. I uh, like electric, electric, like orchestra. You no. Know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? 
Mm -hmm. The guy uh, who was who wrote at least half of the of the songs on 21st Century Junk uh, is a friend of ours. He also plays on on Days in LA, I think, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. big, big, uh, sounds. Uh, so he wrote those tunes, and we had, you know, we found out that we had in common this uh, um, that we liked the Electric Light Orchestra, and we also liked Pink Floyd and things like that. So um, at the time, I think we were listening a lot to a band called Stackridge, also a British band called Stackridge. Mm -hmm. So some of the songs are very Stackridge influenced, some songs are Pink Floyd influenced, some songs uh, are a bit electric like uh, orchestra uh, influenced. And, but that's, you know, that's the background for, that, for those recordings. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, for, for the, the, the fourth uh, album, Dynamo Bliss, 21 century for, uh, junk, popular music and out of time. This, this are these albums. Yeah, let's That's see. Uh, day and uh, day and night, I think, is the third one, right? Uh, that was the third album. Mm -hmm. uh, day and night, but that was more progressive. That was very. Uh, I think that was. Well, we just made it much more uh, pro progressive and a bit weird. <laughs> a bit weird. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a fun album to do. Because uh, uh, Day and Night from 2013 is uh, an album very uh, special. Uh, we are uh, on board uh, of a starship for a, a journey now. Uh, it's like that you have, a, if you have a concept, you know, you, hmm. you set up a concept, for example. In, in this case, the, the concept would be, uh, we just say that it would be a day and night cycle. So it would be one day, going through one day. Uh -huh. So every song has to, had to relate somehow to this day and night cycle. Uh -huh. And uh, if you do that, they sort of, the songs automatically belong together a little bit. Uh -huh. you, you make, it's almost subconsciously, you make it like that. So they, they, they fit together in a way. So it becomes more like a journey. Uh -huh. And then the State Co's uh, career began with the eponymous album State Co's. And the, the, this is the real basis of State Co's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. State Co's, the album, this is uh, the beginning of the of Absolutely. story. Yeah. Absolutely. That was the first one I did. <clears throat> I think I was in Greece before we. We, well, I was in Greece when we started writing songs for them. So we wrote demos before, uh, before I went back to Sweden. And um, let's see, we probably recorded in 2009 or 2010. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but 2009, 2010. And... Um, uh, I think, I think we recorded every weekend or something. I wasn't living in the same city. I'm pretty sure I was in Stockholm and, and uh, uh, Dolia was in uh, Umeå. Uh -huh. And the drummer was in Umeå. Uh, so we had to sort of I think the, first, the first one we did re record together. Uh -huh. Maybe we did. Oh, yeah, you're right. Some of it at least. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, wrote, we wrote it pretty much one summer uh, at your backyard. One summer. We wrote the songs, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I have, some, I have some distinct memories of writing. Uh, I've changed in Greece, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, uh -huh. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it, that happened. You know. But the, the rest of the songs, maybe we wrote them together. In, in, uh, might be... Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, and we did. We wrote the demos. We wrote some demos with guitar and piano for Mystery Jane mm -hmm. and some other stuff. So I remember that. Uh -huh. New York, also. New York, yeah. Oh. That's right. Yeah. And and can uh, can you uh, tell us more about the the fabulous reprise of Georgie Poggi in uh, 2010? What the story of this uh, reprise? 
we was uh, in LA. We we uh, was recording with uh, Jason Chef from oh. Chicago, and we did a version of this uh, Georgia Porgy song. We uh, it was Jason's pick, really. I think he mm. chose this song to record, uh, and uh, we said, "Yeah, it's a cool song. We can do that." And Stefan and Jason sat down uh, at the piano and Stefan rearranged it, made some changes in the chords and, and, uh, and uh, the key change, I think. Uh, and then we rehearsed it with the band and we recorded it in, in one day, a couple yeah, of hours. It, it needed a key change because there were, there were two singers. <laughs> yeah. Two <laughs> lead singers. One, it was a girl singing also. <laughs> 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 That's why it had the key change, but we kept the key change. We did the uh, we, we recorded it uh -huh. with only for for steakhouse and a uh, hard goodbye in 2011. What a song! We can find everything about California in it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the the story about about that tune. There's there's one thing. There was an instrument I really miss. I, I used to have an analog synth at the time. It was a, a Korg, a Korg DW8000 uh -huh. is the name of the synth. And it had a great, great sound. But that's the sound you hear in the beginning of the song. Uh -huh. Is that the riff that plays in the beginning, beginning of the song. Uh -huh. Like one week after we recorded the song, the synth broke down completely. And there was, we couldn't find any ways to fix it. You know? mm -hmm. So I, eventually I sold it to someone who thought <laughs> to fix it. So and anyway, it, uh, uh, yeah, that's the basis for, for the song was that. You know, that's it. And in the second one uh, in 2013, can you tell us uh, more about the story of this EP? IP, uh, because there is too much song to uh, to resume. This uh, this IP, a special IP, the second one. And the the second one was our our second album. It was a it was a full album, um, oh. our second album okay. that we recorded. It it was our follow up to the, to the first that uh, we uh, we had. Huge success with our first album. We, we didn't expect it to to uh, that people would would like it so as much as they did. Um, so we decided to we heck why not make another record, and then we came up with a, the second one. Uh -huh. um, and we reached out to Jay Graydon again, Bill Champlin, Peter Freestedt, another great guitar player, guitar and friend here in Sweden and uh, some more people as well. And we, we wrote some songs uh, and we recorded it. And um, yeah, it's a great record. And in 2016, you are back in studio with stealing the show, something special with maybe uh, more vocals, more rhythm too. Uh, we can find some uh, uh, steely Dan harmonies too. It's very close, no? I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Those were a bit one-off tracks. We did them. We weren't working really on an album at the time. We just did a few tracks. It was still in the show and it was... Um, uh, what was the other tracks? Um, the train. Uh, Stuck on a train. Yeah. Stuck on a train was also. Yeah, we did a few tracks at that time. Mm -hmm. I remember what we had in mind really for those tracks. But I think we just wrote them and uh, recorded them. And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. We collected a few and then we, then we released them as an EP. And about this, your single, um, sorry, I'll pop up. Uh, <laughs> about your single Center of the Sun in 2019. Was it a sign of your comeback after some years off? Center, Center of the Sun was actually the first, I think it's the first song after our first album. Uh -huh. Yeah, 
you're, you're thinking about the re-release of that, that, that single probably because we did it back in 2011 probably. Yeah. Hmm. That, was, that was just after we did the first album. So that one and, and Hard Goodbye, they went, they, we did them together. Like we did them on the same day probably. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's the same drummer, I remember. Yeah. Um, the same setup and everything. So we, we just did a, a re, no, we did a remix of Center of the Sun. We replaced some, replaced the synth solo that I wasn't very happy with. And, um, we did some other changes as well. A remix? But, yeah, it's a mix and the, but we re-recorded re some things that we didn't like. Mm -hmm. like well, stuff that I, that I didn't like about my own play, <laughs> basically. So, um, yeah, that was it. And the same year you produce Challenges with the fabulous hit Borrow Time, All Over and Waiting for Love. <laughs> Waiting for Love. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really, really a, a great song. Uh, can you tell us more about this uh, brand new album? How, where do you find the inspiration and uh, uh, especially for Waiting for Love? Because this is this one. Uh, we, we, we tried I, to I have it in my head all day long. Ah, okay. <laughs> that, that was Waiting for Love. We, we tried to take it's a cover song. It's an, an, a famous Swedish artist called Avicii, who, who and, the, and, the, and the song is a huge hit in an EMD pop dance hit. And we, we, we liked the song and Avicii died tragically that year. Uh, and we wanted to, to pay a, an homage to him mm -hmm. and, and to make uh, make uh, that electronic dance music sound with sound more West Coast and with the jazz influences and pop influences. And we, I think we did pretty good stuff on huh? It was difficult because it's a quite different way of writing melodies for, for these different genres. And so we had to find ways to, to uh, add space, I think, while we were doing the doing the arrangements. That was a tricky part. Uh, but I think, I think it's interesting because it's a nice melody. It's a really it's a good melody to start with. And it's, it just shows that a great melody can work in, in many different forms. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, thanks to Avicii who, for, for writing that, and with, along with his co-writers for that. that mm -hmm. you know. and, and this is uh, something you, you always search to, um, by create some song to give hope, to give a joy uh, to your fans. Is this something you 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 search always? You know, when when we started listening, when I started listening, for sure, I you know music uh, is very important. It was a very important thing. It's almost like you know it's. Um, again, this kind of escapism from reality, but also sort of in, enhances everything. You you have all these memories connected with music, and you and you, there's nothing better than than to to buy an album and being you know completely um, sort of consumed by it by the greatness of great music. I don't think there's anything better than that. So, uh, you know, that's always going to be the, the ultimate goal to be able to, to, to make this kind of music that has a profound effect upon people, you know, the same way that other music had a profound effect upon me, mm -hmm. I believe. And last question, um, what about the COVID uh, and all the troubles all around the world? Um, do you think you will be on tour in uh, 2021 or 2022 or uh, what, what, what are the plans? We can only hope for it to, to get better at first. We can't make any plans before, before it gets better, but, but we'll continue to, to write songs and, and uh, release music and just hope for the best. 
that we can go out and play soon again. I really mm. miss it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's probably going to come back in some in some form, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure it's going to happen in the same way as we expect it to be, like it what like it used to be, you know, mm -hmm. because life is is going to be a little bit different. This this um, this virus is here; it's not going to go away. We're going to get vaccinated, probably everyone, and uh, uh, but it's going to be. Uh, changes to the virus can be mutations and things that are still going to exist in, in in the world. So, and we have to to uh, relate. We have to take that into consideration. When we're constructing the the new kind of society that we're going to be in. Mm. So I'm not sure we're going to see these big arenas with people uh, like it's been before. Uh, you know, maybe, hopefully, but. Uh, I'm not so sure, you know, as things are looking right now, but but music will still. I mean, music is always going to be so important to everybody. Sure. So we're going to find, we're going to find ways. We're going to find new ways to to incorporate music into life anyway. Mm. Do you, it might be. And do you think that music will have to reinvent itself? in the next years, because we, we uh, I'm a fan, and um, it's really a mystery uh, between uh, Spotify, Deezer, Apple Music. We don't know exactly if the artist um, uh, gains some money, really, uh, on these platforms. This is, uh, is, it, is this some good ways for you? I guess now, yes, but mm. <laughs> that's true. Uh, the whole thing about streaming is 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 opening a can of worms, worms because there's so many there's so many aspects to it. The, there's nothing wrong with the technology per se. The technology of of you know being able to stream music wherever you are, listening to any music you want wherever you are. I think that's pretty amazing. You know, you can you can get every every music that you want, you know, immediately uh, for a low price. But the downside, of course, is that artists are not paid, and the whole industry suffers uh, if it doesn't get if it doesn't get paid. Mm. And the 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 long term consequence is that you can't really uh, you you can't spend all your life. Developing, developing your, um, uh, or I should, I should rephrase. You, you can't, you can't have the same kind of system that you used to have back in the 70s and 80s, when people would be paid to play on albums, and there was a, an industry around it. And, mm. You know, these these guys did it for a living, and they were great. Mm. You have all mm. these people like Graydon and, and David Foster and yeah, and Champlin and everybody who, who was. You know, and, and and the Toto guys, and they played at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. They played all the time, and they were, mm. you know, doing this amazing work, uh, doing many sessions every day. Mm. Uh, but you can't really do that now because of the way things are. You can't pay. This. You can't have people working like that. There's a certain kind of technological unemployment happening because of the way the record records are made mm -hmm. you have maybe a guy in a in a, in a bedroom mm -hmm. and he, people can do anything they can do you know a complete album at home mm -hmm. i really need to go to the studio anymore mm -hmm. but it's very hard to be an expert on everything you can't be a fantastic drummer fantastic bass player fantastic songwriter fantastic singer and fantastic um uh, artwork <laughs> artworker or, uh, you know, and do everything at the same time. Hmm. It, it's, kind of, it's kind of tricky, that thing. So you have, have to find... Have, yeah, we have to find a way to take care of the artists. artists to, there's nothing wrong. I, 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 I like the, the idea that there are really no more big, the labels, and the labels don't take, suck out all the money from the artists. I like the, the idea that music can go directly to the listener from the hmm. artists. In a open source? 
Yeah, but you need, hmm. they need, it needs to find find some ways to get artists to, to get paid hmm. to, to make music, or else I don't know what's gonna happen. Because uh, as a, on Spotify, there is always a link to make a donation, but uh, even on the uh, Foo Fighters page, there is zero dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is strange, no? Because it's free. <laughs> Don't know, man. Uh, oh. wh why they put a link uh, to make a donation? Uh, is this uh, about the COVID? Uh, yes, yeah. To, to help you? Yeah, I think so. Directly? We, we, we got some, we have gotten some donations, not many, but a, a few. Uh, so it, it's, some people are, are actually using it. But they have to be really dedicated fans. They're the ones who really want to support the artist. And they probably know that some artists are more struggling than, than others, you know. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't maybe donate to, to Madonna. It doesn't really make sense, you know. Yeah, sure. So, you know, it depends. Depends on the artist, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, Daniel, Stefan, I would like to thank you so much for your time and your patience. I wish uh, you uh, the best for the future. And I hope to, to see maybe uh, one new single in the next uh, months or uh, something special. Yeah? Yeah, we're, we're working on new stuff. So you are still we... working, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but we will release some new stuff soon. Okay, great. So we will uh, we'll stay in touch and uh, take care. You too, <laughs> thank, man. You, thank care and uh, and keep uh, and uh, the, the the good music in you and uh, give joy and uh, and uh, pleasure to us, the fans. Thank you very much. And you too. Keep doing what you do. Uh, this is very important. It's very important. Yeah, yeah. only and passion. This and. And everything that you like, promote it, yeah. put it out there. It's a great thing. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.